Hello, 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 hello and welcome. Hope you are doing well today. So, we are going to crack on with a verse that spoke to me the other day. I thought it was really, really powerful. And it is in Psalm 71. I know we've all been through the Psalms not that long ago and Proverbs, but this verse in Psalm 71 I think is outstanding. So I'm going to read from Psalm 71, verse 14. But before we do, I'll say hello. My name is Mark. Hello. Uh, I'm one of the, on the leadership team here at Audacious Church and uh, really glad to be with you. So hopefully you've now had time to get your electronic Bible out or whatever and you're following with me. I'm going to read this from the ESV version, but it's, it's good in all of them because it's God's word. So here we go. It says this, but I will hope continually. And I just think full stop there, just to be to dwell in a state of hope all the time would just is a characteristic that is utterly godly. You know, if something bad happens, it's going to be okay. So we could sit there for a while, but we're going to continue. But I will hope continually, and I will praise you yet more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day, for their number is past my knowledge. With mighty deeds of the Lord God I will come. I will remind them of your righteousness, yours alone. Oh God, from my youth you have taught me and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. I want to talk about verse 16, but first I need you to indulge with me for a little moment and, and I'll set the scene. You see, I do like movies, uh, but there's one point in the movie that I think no matter what genre you're watching, that is usually a moment like this. It's some point and it's not the end. It's not when, you know, the, the goodies win or or the guy gets the girl or the girl gets the guy or whatever, you know, the, the tear jacker moment. I actually love the sort of moment in the movie where the coach is given an inspirational speech and all of a sudden the team put their differences aside and knuckle down and, and, and sort it out. Or the moment when the soldiers all start checking their weapons. <laughs> they're putting the knives in the holders. They're, they're clipping the ammo into the guns. Or, um, you know, when 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 Rocky starts training. When he starts lifting all the weights. And it's just close up after close up of his muscles. And the perspiration flowing down his, his, his face. Or... He's running through the snow or he's running through the city and that old, I just love these bits. Or, or the bit when the A-team, you know, get the, this van together and they find a hand glider and two oil drums and a piece of plasticine and some duct tape. It's just kind of like planning a youth night. And all of a sudden they come out of this old farmer's barn with an unbelievable weapon of mass destruction that vanquishes the baddies. Or when seven daring space pilots climb into their tiny little X-Wing after a brilliant briefing and they go up against the might of the entire galaxy in the Empire and their Death Star. I love that moment when that happens. The moment that just before the battle, we don't know if they've won or lost, but something's about to happen. And against all odds, this team of misfits or this person who was up against it who had no chance all of a sudden you see them prepping and they're about to win do you know what that moment in, in coach car or star wars or the magnificent seven or band of brothers or any, any movie any film that always gets me and it always fills me with hope but there's one thing that transcends every one of those genres, every one of those films, and it's this thing. It's this thing that happens. They all have, in that moment, they've all prepared. They've all done, they've done the hours. They've put it in. It's not a secret magic weapon or a secret magic power that they've suddenly got that means they will now win. But they've all prepared. They've set They've made everything that was wrong right. They've forgiven everybody. They've put aside the differences. They've, they've aligned with one common vision. But somewhere they've all prepared. And that's what I wanted to talk about today is how do you prepare when something... You don't even know there's something around the corner. 
but we all know that something creeps up around the corner. We don't know what will happen tomorrow in, in our family lives. You know, who, who predicted a pandemic? Boom, nobody. But we don't have a killer piece of music like Rocky did. We don't have an inspirational coach. Although, you know, you can email me and I, I'll do that coaching moment for you if you want. But we all can prepare. And in this psalm, which was written by David, approaching the end of his life, he... He's given us the key to what to do in a time of preparation. And I think we should always be preparing. We should always be preparing. We should always be preparing to talk better. We should always be preparing for the next thing. We might not know what it is, but we can be preparing. And this is what David says in, in verse 16. With the mighty deeds of the Lord God, I will come. So what's he saying? When he comes up against it, he's got something in his bag that's going to help him. Like the soldiers as they're getting their guns ready. As the A-team survey the scene and see bits and pieces of farmyard junk. Because of their skill and their knowledge and what they've, they've come with, they can turn that into the thing that's going to save the day. When Rocky looks at a slab of meat and starts pounding it and he's preparing for his next fight, there will be more modern films, obviously, that you will make note of, but they're all preparing. So how do you prepare for what's coming around the corner? David says, with the mighty deeds of the Lord God, I will come. And he gives us this blueprint. This was when he was old, but when he was young and he was about to face Goliath, what did he say? He said, I come against you in the name of the Lord. What did he say to Saul as Saul tried to put the armour on him, he said, I don't need that, I need God. I've beaten a bear and a lion with God. I don't need the armour. What he did in both of them think in both of those situations, he started to declare what God had done and who God was. That is the our armour in our battle. That's us sharpening our sword, getting ready for a struggle. That's us getting ready for the challenge, getting ready for what is around the corner. We may not have a theme tune or the coach, like I said, but we've got strategy for the struggle. And it's this. Start writing down and remembering everything that God has done. Why don't you start like a little journal that just says, hey, this is what I'm thankful for today. Because every one of those days that you see God doing something in your life is another moment that it backs up his character, that when you're in your struggle, you simply go, I'm coming here knowing that he's done so much in the past that this challenge is going to be okay. So I don't know what's going on today, guys. I don't know. You might have no challenges, but we can all be preparing. So I challenge you today, and start writing stuff down. If it's in your personal life, write it down. If it's something God's done in one of your friends' life, write it down. If it's something that you see in the Bible, a story of, of Jesus healing the leper or a story of him raising somebody from the dead or Peter walking around in his shadow touching people, if it could happen then, it can happen today because God is the same yesterday, today and forever. So as you start remembering these things, let's get preparing for what's about to come. Get your bullets ready, sharpen your sword and get your strategy in place. Let's remember God has done great things and he's going to do great things. I'd love to pray for you right now. So, that, um, yeah, just to help you in your day. Thanks for being utterly brilliant, church. We will see you soon. Have the best day. So let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. We thank you that you have done miracle after miracle. You, we thank you that you have found ways when there seems to be no way. We thank you that you have healed. And we thank you that you've done that in the past, but you can do that again. So in every person's situation today, I pray for your goodness, for your grace and your mercy. Bless our church in your name, Jesus. Amen. See you later, church. Bye-bye.